Hello, and welcome to my presentation of our work investigating the development of the lamocortical connectivity. So why study the thalamus? The thalamus has a major role in shaping brain function, and to this end, abnormalities with the structure have been linked to considerable brain dysfunction. So, to under so understanding the same structure is of key importance. Most studies investigating thalamic organization do so from the perspective of its nuclei, areas with distinct molecular, psychoarchitectural, and connectivity properties. However, we and others have found that thalamus is also organized along continuous gradients of these features, the most prominent of which we have found to be oriented medial laterally. Cortical connectivity along the thalamic axis reveals a connectivity gradient in the cortex as well, bearing along an anterior posterior axis. Previous findings showing gradient organization in the thalamus have also suggested that thalamocortical connectivity develops along these gradients. Firstly, Genes expressed along the thalamic axis show differential expression across development. Secondly, these same genes are associated with neurodevelopmental conditions. And thirdly, the orientation of these axes correspond to known developmental patterns. So then, we would expect thalamocortical connectivity to develop along thalamic axes. To investigate this, we use neonatal data from the Developing Human Connectome Project. This is a large database of approximately 900 scans of neonates, and we used approximately 300 of these, which showed low levels of head motion. From each of these neonatal scans, we do measured the cortical connectivity. So firstly, throughout the thalamic volume, we defined a set of uh, 800 seeds, approximately equally distributed throughout. Then, from each seed, we perform probabilistic tractography to the cortex. We then measured the connect these connectivity patterns to each vertex on the cortical surface. Using a process known as connectome smo spatial smoothing, we smooth these connectivity values across vertices, and by repeating this for all possible vertices, we can create a dense connectivity map or matrix um, of connectivity from each C to approximately 29,000 cortical vertices. Next, we can extract a gradient from this connectivity matrix. Now, there are many possible methods one could hand off the data to in order to perform this gradient decomposition. So we went with the good old ever-reliable principal component analysis. This allows us to decompose the connectivity matrix to a matrix of principal component scores and principal component loadings. We perform two types of decompositions. Firstly, neonatal connectivity maps were decomposed on an individualized basis. Then, a holdout set of the 20 oldest neonates at time of scan were averaged and decomposed to create a term template. So, for each connectivity matrix, so we use this term template in order to provide a reference to allow fair comparison of different individuals. So, for each connectivity matrix, we have these um, loadings, these matrix of scores and loadings. The scores indicate axes of cortical connectivity across thalamic seeds, while the loadings reflect patterns of cortical connections along each thalamic axis as defined in the score matrix. In other words, they reflect spatial patterns of variation in connectivity. The most variance explained by these PCs was largely concentrated in the first three, with the very first explaining nearly 30% of variation. Focusing on just the first principal component, if we extract the associated scores for this axis and project them onto the corresponding thalamic seed and its surrounding voxels in the brain, we see a thalamic gradient which predominantly varies along an anterior posterior axis although there is some medial lateral variation in there as well. By a very similar logic, we can take the principal component loadings for the cortical regions, and if we project them onto their associated cortical region, we also see an anterior-posterior cortical gradient. We can understand these gradients as being reflections of each other. For example, if we plot the connectivity pattern of the thalamic seeds in a sliding window, if we move from the bottom to the top of the gradient, the cortical projection patterns vary from being preferentially anteriorly oriented to preferentially posteriorly oriented. Similarly, if we do the same based on cortical loadings, 
areas low on the quarter gradient, gradient have a conductivity pattern negatively correlated with the flamic axis, or those positively positioned on the gradient have a positive correlation with the flamic axis. So, in other words, anterior regions of the thalamus are preferentially connected to anterior cortical ones, and posterior thalamic regions are preferentially connected to posterior cortical ones. This also means that anterior and posterior areas of connectivity profile that this also means that anterior and posterior areas have connectivity profiles that are maximally different from each other along this first component axis. As mentioned previously, this is a term template, and we want to assess how much individuals deviate from this template. To do so, we can correlate each individual's um, similarity of the term template against their age at scan. We can see that this reveals a strong positive correlation, meaning that across the third trimester, the gradient is becoming gradually refined. And I really want to sort of stress the gradual. So we can see that the weakest correlation in the scores is about 0.9, meaning the flammic gradient is largely in place. If we consider just the, the cortical um, gradient and the similarity, we can see that there is more variation, but this is also showing a gradual refinement, meaning that this gradient is largely in, in place by the start of the third trimester. Now, of course, this is only looking at overall similarity, and we know parts of the brain develop at different rates, so there is likely to be regional differences. So we can see this if we take some individuals um, cortical projections, and we can see that there are these, while the overall spatial patterning is roughly similar, we can see that there are clear areas of difference. So to assess these regional differences, we can assess how uh, vertex loadings across neonates vary with age. If we project these values back onto their respective vertices, we can see that these show that there are pronounced changes with age in uh, frontal, temporal, and parietal association areas, as well as somatosensory and insular regions. Now, if we were to do, we can do the same sort of analysis for thalamic seeds, and we can see that there are age related shifts in anterior and ventral, lateral, ventral, um, posterior areas. Again, based on the conserved connectivity patterns, regions of the thalamus showing age-related changes and areas of the cortex showing age-related changes are preferentially connected. So what does this mean in terms of the gradient? So just focusing on the cortex. If we plot each region's cortical loading against its gradient position on the term template, we can see that these changes are varying across the axis. But again, this is quite abstract. So let's relate this back to connectivity. So, remembering that changes in the cortical gradient reflect preferential connectivity on an anterior, posterior, or posterior anterior thalamus direction. So, cortical regions which are showing age rated increases can be thought of either as either moving towards a more posterior dominant pattern of connectivity or away from an anterior dominant pattern of connectivity. Conversely, Regions showing decreases can be thought of moving towards a more anterior dominant pattern of connectivity or away from a posterior dominant pattern of connectivity. The same logic can also be applied to age-related changes in the thalamic gradient and those regions' pattern of connectivity with the cortex. These changes in thalamic cortical connectivity align with known neurodevelopment. One final further thing we wish to know is, does preterm birth disrupt the formation of this gradient? So looking at uh, neonates who are born preterm but scanned at term with a set of matched controls, we can see that there are differences in the thalamic gradient in uh, medial, ventrolateral, and ventral posterior areas. If you look at the cortical projection pattern of these thalamic areas, we can see that they are connected to frontal, somatosensory, and insular regions, all areas which have previously been found to have abnormalities in preterm infants. Potentially, preterm birth is um, disrupting the sequential formation of this axis. But overall, it seems the patterning of thalamocortical connectivity remains largely intact. So in review, we find a primary thalamic axis of thalamocortical connectivity, which predominantly extends across anterior-posterior orientation in thalamus and cortex. Secondly, 
This spatial orientation is largely in place at the start of the third trimester and undergoes gradual refinement up until term. Third, regional changes in these axes tend to be located in higher order cortical and thalamic regions. And finally, preterm birth may partially obstruct development along these axes and thereby result in thalamic cortical impairment. Uh, that's all I have, and thank you very much for listening.